Hi everybody, Ryan here for another supplemental video for HCI 595. Today we're going to talk about fun with Illustrator. So after speaking with my section, I've noticed that uh, a lot of people are having common issues when using Illustrator. So I'm going to briefly go over today masking, using artboards, saving as PDFs, and saving out images such as JPEGs, PNGs, etc. So uh, let's get started. Open up Illustrator here, and for the demo that I'm using today, this is today's comic from xkcd.com. Uh, I think that this would simulate a drawing that we were going to trace or possibly use in an uh, in Illustrator project. So what I'm going to show today is masking. So say for instance you drew uh, a bunch of logos on a single scan, and you just wanted to show the one uh, out of all, say, 30 different sketches that you had. Um, the best way to do that is by using masking in Illustrator. And so I'm going to take the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a box around this last panel here. Say so this is the area that we want. And now you'll notice that I don't have a color or a stroke uh, assigned to this. Not necessary for what we're going to do here. So then I'm going to select the black arrow tool and while holding the shift key and clicking, I'm going to select the image below. That's going to select both images. And here I'll show you the layers. So the linked file here is our graphic. And the path here is what I just drew. And so then you'll go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Now, for those of you on an Apple, you can do Apple 7. Uh, PC has its own hotkey, uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show menu views. So if you click on Make, you'll see that it is just displaying this. Now, if you hover your mouse over the image, you can see the big bounding box, which shows that there's more of an image below. And in your Layers panel, you can see that this is now a group. So if you take a look, in the group, you've got your clipping mask, which is this path that I drew, and your linked file. So if you want to get back to your linked file and maybe move it around, you can double click into your group in isolation mode, select the linked file, and then this will allow you to move the image around, say, oh, I didn't want that last panel, I wanted the second panel. So then you can modify your clipping mask as well. So now you just have the second panel. We'll back out into the main artboard. So other ways you can use this are, um, say for example, you're drawing a character that has eyes. And so we're going to draw the outside of the eye here. And copy and paste in place, move this over, and then we need pupils. So go back to the lips tool, make it black with black with no stroke, and draw an oval. And again I'm gonna copy and paste that in place so that we've got similar sized pupils, similar sized eyes. So for expression you may want the pupils to be down here but you don't want them drooping out of the outside of the eye. So what we'll do is we will copy the outside of the eye layer we will paste in place and now you'll see that it's over top of the pupil so we want to select both the pupil and shift click on the outside of the eye and then go to object clipping mask make and so now it's just clipping and so now it's clipping the pupil out to the outside of the eye so We'll do this again on the other one. I'm going to edit, copy, 
edit, paste in place. Now it's important that the layer that you want to use as your mask be above the layer that you want to mask. So again, we'll select the pupil on the outside of the eye, go to object, clipping mask, make. So let's say that uh, now you want to resize the eye, and so you'll notice that these are two separate layers. The outside layer here is the outside of the eye. So you'll want to select both of them and go to Object, Group. And so now over here you can see that both the outside and inside are grouped together as one object. And then you can scale that up. Rotate it whatever you would need to do. Um, if you wanted to just edit the pupil, then this is the ungrouped section over here. Double click the pupil to get inside the group. Select just the pupil path. And then you can edit that to make it larger. And we'll do the same with the other one. And that's masking. So now I'm going to talk about artboards. As Cindy mentioned in one of her videos, uh, when you're opening up a new document in Illustrator, you can name it, you can set it profile, uh, you can change the number of artboards. So the artboards is actually the, the area where you're going to be doing your work on. Anything outside of that isn't going to show up in a print or digital file like a PDF or a JPEG. So I'm going to cancel out of this and open up my plant project. And this is actually two artboards. I'm going to go to artboard number one. So if you're unfamiliar, there's the artboards panel here to the right in the standard Illustrator setup. Or you can also go to window artboards to view your artboards. There's also, and I'm not sure if you can see it on this video here, there's also a panel down here that allows you to click through page by page to each artboard. So one of the benefits of artboards is that you can copy images and paste them in place in the exact same place that it would be on another page, like I've done here with the Emoto logo. Another benefit is, and this is going to start to cover saving as a PDF, you can go to File, Save As, under Format, select Adobe PDF, and we'll save this out to the desktop. It's going to give you an option box. Uh, I usually turn off Preserve Editing, Illustrator Editing capabilities embed page thumbnails, optimize for fast web view because I'm usually either uploading PDFs or emailing PDFs, and create Acrobat layers from top level layers, um, which minimizes the size of the file. Click Save PDF, it'll export, and I'll open my, and I'll open my new PDF from the desktop, and here you go, a two-page PDF. Another benefit of artboards is that you can also use them to select certain areas that you want to save out. Say you want to save this, this logo as a JPEG. So much like masking, I would go to my rectangle tool, and I don't have any colors assigned here. Draw a box around the logo area that I want, and you can even modify that so it's a little closer in. Then you go to Object, Artboards, Convert to Artboards. And so what this does is this makes a third artboard, or page three of our document. So if we click there, there's Artboard 1, there's Artboard 2, and then Artboard 3 is zoomed in just that logo from page 1. And so with Artboard 3 highlighted, know that because there's this black bounding box around the edge. 
go to File, Save for Web and Devices, and here let me scale this down here so that it's on the video screen. So you can see that this is just the Emoto logo, which is what we want. You have some settings over here, GIF, JPEG, PNG, um, I usually only use the PNG 24. PNGs allow you to have this alpha channel, so if you're placing your logo on top of something else and you want what you're placing it on top of to show through, PNGs work well. Uh, SWF, which is a flash file, SVG, which is a web graphics file, and bitmap. So let's, for this example, use JPEG. That works well in Word and PowerPoint and stuff like that. Uh, high is a good compression quality. And we'll click Save. I'm going to have it saved here to my desktop and call this Komodo logo and then click save. And I'll open up the Moto logo here. And there it is, saved out directly from Illustrator without having to save out the page, open it up in Photoshop, crop it down. It'll save you a lot of time. So that's all I have for this video. Um, if you have any questions, you can email Deb, Cindy, or I. Thanks.